good afternoon everyone uh, a fantastic uh, cleftcon 2022 is going on and nisha you have made my job much simpler you have uh, done the context setting already uh, covid has taught everybody that how important health is uh, people are taking their physical health really seriously but uh, a very big aspect is your mental well-being so um, where it all starts uh, and to uh, talk about this uh, we have two eminent personalities on stage today with me uh, for uh, saranya jaykumar i will have to put on my specs because it's a long list of our achievements so i'll read them out i could not uh, sort of remember it so starting with the dr saranya uh, dr saranya kumar is the first doctorate in educational psychology from chennai who works with schools colleges tamil nadu police department uh, government's uh, samagra siksha program uh, she is also a member of uh, tamil nadu commission for protection of child rights and is a well being consultant practitioner specializing in helping children and adolescents uh, what many people do not know that dr sarana jaykumar was born with cleft and uh, she is now an active voice uh, in uh, raising and uh, generating awareness regarding cleft uh, in the entire community the other panelist uh, with me today is uh, you all must be knowing dr s c sood dr sood is a cleft surgeon and he is also a smile train project director at two of our partner hospitals in delhi sant parmanand hospital and uh, max uh, shalimar bag uh, so uh, welcome both of you uh, dr saranya my first question to you or uh, not even question i would just uh, uh, want to know what your uh, first memory as a child and then what your journey took why did you decide on taking this field which is very important we have heard so many proud children sharing that the confidence that they have developed so uh, tell us more about that please yeah first of all thank you so much for having me bringing me all the way from tamil nadu to delhi to speak about my cleft lip and my journey which i haven't done earlier at all i've probably forgotten that i was born cleft lip because of so many other things i i did in the journey uh see i'll tell you poverty low caste girl child cleft lip bad combination i was born uh, into a family of the dobi community south of tamil nadu where people were not of that community were not allowed to wear slippers were not allowed to enter the homes of others so i remember my grandparents were not allowed to enter others homes they were asked to come back side get dirty clothes and just leave wash the clothes in the river and get the, get them back to their house so my father didn't like this environment so he moved to chennai with my mother with nothing but a bag of clothes nothing nothing no education my mother and father never went to school cannot speak one word of english good in tamil do but had the thought of living life successfully one day so that little energy brought them to chennai they got married and with the little money that the friends gave they got a house for rent and then they started living there and then When my mother when my mother was pregnant in just 3 months of marriage they decided not to continue having this baby because of poverty so my mother wanted to go and abort she did so many other things to try and abort at home but it didn't work so they went for abortion and the gynecologist there said see if the person sitting outside is your husband i think you should continue having this baby because you're already 30 31 years old and if that is an extra marital affair it's okay i think for your safety we will try and go ahead with this abortion my mother burst out into tears and she said no whatsoever i am one unlucky idiot my husband is one unlucky idiot let this girl also be like that it's okay or this child also be like that it's okay let me give birth to this child so no vitamins taken no proper food given to my mother i totally understand and then when i was born my mother was furious with the doctor because she thought during the c section the doctor cut my face because the cleft lip nobody knew anything about the cleft lip the five it was a c section and 5000 rupees had to be paid to the hospital my father did not have that money 
so to get that money ready itself took about one week and that one week i was in the hospital only at st isabel's chennai and after that when i was growing up nobody knew what this was they probably then there were there were people in my village who said this is evil i think you should kill this baby because this is evil babies cannot be born like this we don't know what this is so please kill this baby is the advice that was given to my mother my mother and father fought so much to keep me living in the first place surgery was not even an option and then i grew up i was given education by a local nun who paid my fees from a charity association all that was told to me is nothing matters in life but only education can bring you up so i always studied very very well so then only they will keep continuing to pay my fees i studied very well and only at the age of like 10 i remember that my friends are telling that you look something different when you smile you are not able to close your mouth properly you are always showing your teeth in class and teachers thinking you are laughing all the time i think you should go and find out what is wrong with your face then only i'm starting to think oh my god then there is really some because we didn't have large mirrors in my house where i can always keep looking at my face we were not that, all that conscious you know how we were as children not like children these days no but so and then i realized then my i fought with my mother to take me to a doctor to find out what this is and then there was a doctor who told it this is a cleft lip this is a condition that the child is born with probably genetic all these stories and from that day i wanted to get a surgery done because people were aware there were surgeons for this in chennai and my father said no i can't afford all this what are you thinking i cannot do at the age of 14 i eloped from home i ran away from home i went to ramakrishna mission chennai i stayed there for a week i said i'm not going back home only when you do a surgery i will go back home i want to smile confidently please and then my father said okay let's go and request some doctor uh, Dr. Balaji from Chennai, he did a free surgery for me because my father could not afford that surgery. Trust me, from then I was a different person on the whole. The surgery was a 100% success or no, I don't know. I still have discoloration which I cover up with lipstick, okay. But somewhere within me, I am super confident. I was always a first rank holder from people calling me Sharanya, a cleft lip girl. People started calling me Sharanya, first rank girl. So that's the best memory I have. And then uh, what made you choose this career, uh, Sharanya? Uh, see, as I told you, I was always a first rank holder. And then when you get 98 percentage in your 12th standard, what else do you do? Engineering. OK, so I also joined an engineering college in government quota. I did my BTEC IT. I got placed in TCS. I was in the research department. I worked with children from Bihar and Orissa because we were digitizing their textbooks as a part of a research project. And uh, then I met a lot of children that I thought I have to speak to them about a lot of things because I know what my poverty has shown me, the value of so many things in life, value of education, how much education can improve one person's life. So then I thought, that, then I learned that there's something called educational psychology, which was not there in in Tamil Nadu at that point. So I did my MSc psychology at Madras University, uh, my uh, diploma in education from University of Essex, London, and then my seven years doctorate in educational psychology from Rajasthan under Dr. O.P. Sharma. And then I worked at Ames Delhi for a year and then got trained in child rights at the prime minister's office for six months. Then I, in the meantime, when I was 21, I also got married. I don't really mention about that anywhere. I got married. I have two daughters. And then I returned to Chennai to start practicing as a well-being practitioner, uh, an educational psychologist. I am the uh, mentor for more than 16 groups of institutions, schools, colleges. I, from last year, I'm also the member of the State Child Rights Commission. And as a member of the State Child Rights Commission, I've visited more than a 750 schools raising awareness about cleft lip, about sexual abuse, and about the importance of choosing your career at 9th standard or 10th standard itself. Wonderful. Absolutely amazing. Thank you. Dr. Sood, um, you are a cleft surgeon. You have uh, so far treated maybe hundreds and thousands of cleft uh, uh, affected children and have met their parents. So you are basically the first touch point for a, a family where a cleft child is born. You see children from day one, 
throughout their cleft journey. Um, they will be requiring multiple uh, surgeries and all. So uh, as a surgeon, uh, you also play a role of, uh, of counseling the parents, of counseling uh, patients. So uh, do you recall a story which uh, you could share with the audience today? Or what uh, would you like to uh, share that what sort of uh, confusions, clarifications, uh, how do you counsel them basically uh, going uh, when they meet you? OK, uh, let me start by narrating a small incident which happened some days back in my when i was sitting in my doctor's lounge in my hospital and uh, there was a heart surgeon who was sitting there and he was talking about some great heart surgery he did in a 70 year old man and who lived for another 10 years because what he did and there was a brain surgeon who removed a big tumor from a person's brain and they were boasting about their skills and then they turned to me and they say dr sooth what did you do and I said that last week, one of my patients got a job. And that is the joy of being a plastic surgeon. And that's what I do. And that is the feeling you want to have every day you sit in your OPD and see. I had a patient last week, right? And when I asked this girl's name, Kanaya would remember that. You know, she said, my daughter's name is Mafi. I said, why, is, why did you name your daughter Mafi? You know? She said, we pray to God for forgiveness of the sins which has led to the birth of this girl in our house. So I, I insisted and finally they've come back again and they have changed the name. But then, you know, uh, the Indian parents are very different. Indian parents are so obsessed with their children. Uh, my half a Mac nice son, you know, when I tell him that, why don't you do something? And he is now finally said, like when he was a kid, dad, you are a typical Indian parent, you know, you don't, you don't find peace till you call me 10 times a day. <laughs> so Indian parents are so obsessed with their children and talking of very poor families, you know, this people who don't have enough means to, you know, live uh, without their daily wages. So once you talk of these families and they have a child, a normal child born into their family, they look at the child from various angles. There are various things attached to their thinking, their, their psychology. And uh, first is the joy of having a child. And all parents enjoy that, having a kid, playing with them, bringing them up. Then they attach their dreams to their children. I couldn't achieve it, but this, he will, he'll grow and he'll become something good. I didn't have the opportunities, I'll give him that opportunity to do it. And then they also somewhere in their mind have that feeling that once they go old, these are the people who are going to look after them. But what happens when a cleft child is born? On the earth? So uh, I feel there are two kind of reactions. There are parents who are very aggressive. And fortunately, we heard a lot of you know, cleft people here who were great success stories. And their parents, I'm sure, played a great role having it. And then there is a group of parents who would say, this child is not likely to fulfill the dreams I have. He, I have to do some extra hard work to bring this child to normalcy. Maybe he'll never become normal. Maybe he'll never have a normal job. And he'll always be a burden on me and my family for the rest of the life. I see kids who in born in such an environment as they grow, they practically give up. They accept failure as a part of their destiny. And howsoever hard you motivate, you know, my son's friend's cousin, you know, 18 years, severe cliff triple, if my call it, you know, and he motivated him. I motivated, he said, I don't want another surgery. This is what I am. It's that psychology which we have to fight and that you know being a surgeon for poorest of the poor in my area uh, I, that is the struggle i have to go through day in day out her story is so inspirational and her you know interactions with her parents which were so extremely poor and so i look at her to give us all a solution to give to make me wiser how to deal with these parents and these children yeah, so Dr. Sooth has asked the questions as I was about to ask you. <laughs> uh, 
uh, uh, first uh, two aspects I would like you to address. Uh, the first question is uh, regarding the self-esteem and uh, social isolation which kids realize when they are uh, entering adolescence basically. Before that they are very protective in the family. Uh, so that is my first question. How uh, not even cleft child, I would say every child has some sort because everybody is different. So how should they deal with it? And uh, the, the second question is uh, how the family should take, take this up? What were your uh, suggestions to the family to help their children uh, take this journey forward? See, answering the first question, body shaming is something that teenagers today are facing every single day of their life. Psychology says the most stressful age of human being is 14 to 18. We think only when we start working, only when we have a family, we have to manage the expenses of the family, we get stressed. No. Most stressed age is 14 to 18 when they start really bothering about their appearances, about what they're going to do in life. Friendship and uh, um, the love is more important than anything else in life at that point, isn't it? So that's when exactly children start to feel a little bad about themselves. And talking about children who are a little stout, children with cleft lip, children with dark skin, they really go through a lot in that phase. They don't have the confidence to face the world. They are not being able to be productive in whatever they are doing. Many a times, counselors, teachers, parents, none of their words work. When they are with good company, when they are with good friends, they are so much more productive. They must have friends who make them feel good about themselves. Whether or not the others are making them feel bad doesn't matter. One friend who can say, Macha, you're super da, very nice. That is the only thing that they need. So coming to the second question, gradually, parents must encourage children of that age to have a good company, good friendship. Many a times parents come and, you know, try and sit and overdo their job. They come and sit and say, okay, come, let's speak, family time. Sometimes the child gets really irritated, sir, very irritated. Why should I even talk to you? You can't even understand what I'm going through. And their unnecessary advice, they come and feed on that child, totally unnecessary. Sometimes it's okay to just let them go and be themselves. Let them make mistakes. Let them learn it their way. Too much of interference is also not good. There are parents, I know, especially girls, you know, parents of daughters who are extremely overprotective. Ammu, darling, so sweet. And I've seen daughters sit in their father's lap and hug their father, kiss their father and be very nice with their father. And then this girl will, will expect the same thing with the husband. <laughs> it's very difficult to let go of that bond with her own family. Sir, we have to understand, we still live in a country where a woman is uprooted from where she's living, then placed in another place in the name of marriage, change name, change identity, brought up differently with different values and then have to, you know, live a totally different life in a different family and still be very happy, very productive, take care of everybody, isn't it? So when parents overdo their job, they become a failure in parenting. Sometimes you need to let go. Sometimes Parents should learn to say no to their children. It's okay. Don't get them everything they want. Sometimes children feel bad. You say, it's okay. You'll be okay. Come on. Let's do. Sitting and spending two hours and talking about it is only going to worsen the situation. So, so sometimes it's, it's, it's a fine line, Dr. Sharana, which I, which I feel because uh, I only have one child. So either I was succeeding in bringing him up or I was failing completely in bringing him up. So we don't know as parents also because younger, uh, when you are, uh, when, when a child is born in the family, uh, that's what happens, that parents also, they are learning to be parents. So they don't know. So uh, what I think is, uh, uh, it's okay if you are failing. Uh, you will fall, doesn't matter. There will be somebody, but that first step you need to take to give your hand so that somebody can support to pull you up, right? So when you pulled up, maybe next time if you are falling, uh, you will get up yourself. Or agar aap apne aap nahi bhi uh, uthe, uh, gire, uh, sorry, uthe, to aapko sambhalne wale bahut hai. 
है ना लेकिन अगली बार अगर आप गिरोगे उठोगे गिरोगे उठोगे तो अगली बार मे भी जो दूसरा गिर रहा होगा आप उसको भी उठाने की मदद करोगे सो विद दो वर्ड आई विल लीव आई आई वुड वॉन्ट सम ऑडियंस ऑल्सो इफ दे वॉन्ट टू आस्क सम क्वेश्चन बिकॉज देव बिन लिस्निंग पेशेंटली फॉर सच अ लॉन्ग टाइम किसी कोई माँ बाप यहाँ पर हैं या बच्चे जो हैं जिनको आज आज हमने सुना है डॉक्टर शरण्या से या डॉक्टर सूद से कोई अगर आपके सवाल हो तो अगर आप पूछना चाहें what i didn't get in my childhood i really urge all the parents to do i want parents to be good listeners it really really matters when your child is wanting to talk to you don't throw your advice and start talking you're only eating their time sit and listen when you start listening so many problems are solved in the family children come up with uh, so many new things that even you will be surprised Oh my god my daughter knows so much my child knows so much this is what my daughter is thinking is what you will know so parents must become good listeners and to all my uh, uh, other cleft lip friends here and other children i will say grow be productive be the best wherever you are let your work speak the world will forget about your cleft lip trust me in my experience i will tell you if your work is going to speak if you are going to be productive if you are going to be successful people are going to talk only about that this is just going to be secondary you will have to start living a life like that i must say and one little surprise i have for all of you today i didn't share it with any of you today i came all the way from uh in fact i was traveling the, the entire last week i was in madurai tirunelveli kanyakumari from trivandrum to delhi today tomorrow i'm returning to chennai today i have got an appointment with uh, the chairperson of the national commission for protection of child rights shri priyanka anugu ji and i am going to represent very strongly to amend the right to persons with disabilities act to include the cleft lip oh, also and the second point on my meeting agenda with him is to connect all the district maternal uh, and child health officers together to form a community so they can be connected with smile train india because they are the first point of contact for any child being born in even villages any government hospital any villages so they will be able to give you data they will be able to connect you with many other families even in small villages throughout india i will definitely get this done through the national commission i will do it it's my word thank you thank you thank so you. much dr sharanya uh, for joining this train and taking the journey forward so uh, i'll end it over here with a small uh, two liner this thing that uh, may all be happy may all be healthy god bless each and every one of you over here and uh, join hands take a pledge even if you don't know uh, an individual uh, who's a, who is affected by cleft but please listen to us spread the word around and take this journey forward thank you once again to both our panelists thank you